Last week, uh, a couple of weeks back, we started a, a series, uh, Born Identity. And we've been learning from scripture what, uh, what our identity in Christ uh, is like. When, when we say that he determines uh, how, you know, what we do, how we do it, uh, he, our identity in Christ determines what we should be doing to keep our church alive. Our identity in Christ uh, determines what, what followers of Christ should be known, known for. The first week we talked about uh, uh, the fact that followers of Christ, their DNA is that they are known for serving others, serving the people next to them, serving the people who are within uh, their reach. And then last week we said, you know, followers of Christ are known for making Jesus real uh, to, to others. And one of the, the, the fascinating things about, about people that we're going to be talking about today is you know, a part of our DNA. Uh, here's the thing. We love to share from our lives. We enjoy it when people tell uh, their life stories. And we're going to be talking a little bit about that. For me, for those of you who know me uh, uh, well, one of the things that my wife and I love doing is being involved in DOA, which is a 10-week experience uh, that, that uh, you know, gets us to know about, about uh, relationships, about marriage, uh, how we can get the most out of uh, the relationships that God calls us to. But one of the things I never, one of the stories I never get tired of hearing is stories of how people met. And so for me, you know, I can, I can hear those stories over and over again. Even if the couple have shared it with us, I, I can listen to it like four or five times again. And you know, sometimes you know, it will be like, uh, have, you, have you ever told me a story of, uh, of how, you, how the two of you met? And the guys will go, yeah, I've told it to you like, uh, like twice. Just tell me again. And I know guys are not like that. I know guys are looking, I can see some people looking at me funny, Any, what is, what is all that? Nini. But uh, confession is good for them. For the soul, me, I have a romantic bone in me. I just want to hear the story and hear again. Just tell me again. Every time they, they tell it, it's told differently. And a new detail comes out and it's, it's nice, isn't it? Is anyone who's feeling me? I don't guys you are feeling me. Uh, <laughs> Most guys are not feeling me. Hey, ladies are feeling me. I live in a house full of ladies, so I think some things are rubbing off. That, uh, but anyway, yeah, we feel, okay, so you left the job and now you're you know, in this job or you've been, you've been looking for a job and you didn't tell me. That's, it's because there's something in our DNA that's looking, that's crying out to connect with real life stories with, with, with others. But our DNA in Christ is no, is no different. Our DNA in Christ, it actually, that's, that's a mirror of what our spiritual DNA uh, needs to be or is. And it is that we are built, we are made to share our story with others. And I want us to look at a story in, uh, in the book of John. Uh, John chapter 4, if, you're, uh, if, you're, um, if you have a Bible, just uh, turn it on and tap on to uh, John 4. Um, John 4, and we're going to be reading from verse 3. Never mind, uh, I'm going to be reading from a slightly different uh, version. Uh, but uh, once you're there, we're going to read together. Are you there? I hope you have enough charge for the Bible to stay open. <laughs> let's, let's pray together, shall we? Our Father, we are grateful. We thank you because you have, uh, uh, you have called us to be your children, you have called us to be your followers, and I pray that as we uh, hear from your word that you would help us to connect with it. Uh, we pray and ask, oh God, that you would open up our minds and help us to, to hear from you. My prayer, oh God, is that uh, you would uh, captivate our minds, that you would capture our minds and be at the center of what, uh, what you're calling us to, uh, according to what your word says. I ask, oh God, that you take authority over every uh, issue, over every argument, uh, over every concern that will try to raise itself above the name of Jesus in this place. And I want to ask instead, oh God, that you would lose your spirit and help us to hear from you. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. John tells the story from verse 3. He said, He, that is Jesus, left Judea and departed again to Galilee. Verse 4, but he needed to go through Samaria. Let me just take a pause over there. Here's the thing. Uh, to, from where Jesus was to go to Galilee, uh, you, you could cut through Samaria. That was like, sort of like the shortcut. You could, you, know, you, could go, you could go straight there. But the Jews did not go through Samaria. 
They didn't. Because the Jews really did not like the, the Samaritans or people from Samaria. Uh, and this is the reason why. It actually was an ethnic, an ethnic issue. Uh, not very different from, from what we have in our country today. And so, here's the thing. The Jews consider themselves purebred children of God. And so they were, they were descended from Abraham and, and uh, their tribes were, uh, came out of the, the, the 12 uh, sons uh, of, um, of Jacob. Now, the, the Samaritans on the other hand, they, they were half Jewish and they, they came out of the, the, the coming together of the Jews and the Assyrians. And so they worshipped, they understood the Old Testament like the Jews did, they understood about uh, Jacob and his, and his children, they understood about all of that, but they, they were not purebred Jews. And for that reason, you know, they didn't see eye to eye. The Jews thought, thought the Samaritans were fake Jews. They were make-believe Jews. People who, who, who are trying to be imposters. And so they do, wouldn't have any dealings with them. And so in this particular story, which what is what makes this story very significant, just like the, you know, the good Samaritan, back in the day, there was no such thing among the Jews as a good Samaritan. You couldn't say those two words in the same sentence. And so this is the context that, that Jesus is in. And he says, you know, Jesus needed to go through Samaria. In verse 5, he said he came to a city, the, a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. It's interesting that uh, that plot of land given to Joseph was in the middle of Samaria, where the Jews, you know, sort of didn't, uh, didn't accept these people. Verse 6, now Jacob, uh, Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Let me just break that down. Just, you know, the, the Jews tell their times like the way we tell their time in Swahili. So, so the sixth hour is a, it's a sita, which is a 12 noon, when the sun is here. Or as my mom used to say, when the sun is kaka 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 like this. When the sun is shining. Did you have a mom like that who used to say things in, uh, are they, what are those things called? Uh, onomatopia. Kaka, 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 like this. And so Jesus, humanly tired, you know, he's, he's walked a long distance, you know, he sits by the well and he asks this lady uh, for, um, for a drink of water because the, the lady is drawing water. When the sun is out there, kaka, 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 sa, sa, sita. And the lady responds, and, and, the, and her response sort of breaks, uh, uh, you know, just tells us a little bit about her. How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? And then she goes on to explain. For Jews have no dealings with, with Samaritans. So, so how is it you? And so the, this thing begins to break down. She had, she had issues. She had issues with, with, first of all, her ethnic identity. How is it that you ask, uh, you know, water from a Samaritan? Let me just remind you, Samaritans and Jews don't interact together. Here's the second thing. I am a woman, you are a man begin to reveal just a sense of, of, of distance and a, a sense uh, of not, not connecting. They, she's beginning to see herself and she's saying, okay, this is what separates me from this person. First of all, we have an ethnic difference and then there's a gender difference. We really shouldn't be dealing. We shouldn't be dealing together. Jesus answered and what Jesus did, Jesus' own answer was a self-identity for him. He was revealing to her who he was. He said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and you would have given you living water. The woman said to him, somehow she didn't sort of get the whole thing. She said, sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock? Now here's something that's interesting that's going on. 
You know, she's, she said, Jews and Samaritans have no dealings, but we have a common father, Jacob. She's going all spiritual with him, eh? Have you ever been in those conversations where you start talking about something and then it goes all spiritual all of a sudden? This one is going like that. Jesus knew, you know, there was a physical need over here, but you could see the lady has a, has a spiritual, you know, something that's, that's, that's brewing somewhere inside there. And he, and, and he wants, you know, to tease it out. And Jesus, you know, uh, Jesus continues in verse 13 to explain a little bit about, uh, about what, she, what he wants to provide here. Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. I guess you must have been pointing. Whoever drinks of this water will, will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water I shall give him will become a fountain of water springing up to everlasting life. Then verse 15, the, the woman responds, and she says, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Now you can take these two ways. There's a way that we normally take it, and then there's a Kenyan way. The, the way we normally take it, I, you know, that sentence could very well mean, you know, she, she would have been genuinely interested. You know, if you, if you can give me, if you can give me water that I can drink and I don't have to, I don't have to come here at Sir, Sita, when the sun is, then, then, you know, that's going to be a very good plan, isn't it? It's going to be a very good plan. But there's another way to look at it as a Kenyan. Maybe she was being sarcastic. Yeah. Hey, you have water, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but, but see, you give me that water so I don't have to come here at this time. You, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes, sometimes it goes like that. You're going to read, read the Bible with a little bit of imagination. But, 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 this is what then, then, then Jesus, you know, go, goes, he cuts to the quick. And now over here we begin to see the live, raw, and unedited. That's where it comes out in this, in this conversation. Then Jesus said to her, you know, she's just come out of saying, can you give me that water? Jesus sort of shifts the, the focus of the conversation. He's actually not shifting the main goal of the conversation. And this is how it goes. Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come here. Maybe he was being sarcastic, but you go call your man. And you... It's being, being, being Kenyan again. And the woman said, answered and said, because now this is going very deep. It's beginning to go very deep. Have you ever been in those conversations where you talk with someone? Uh, do you have those friends where you talk with them and you get to meet and you talk for five minutes, then in the sixth minute it goes deep. It just goes very personal. Eh? This is how it went. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to, to her, you have, you have well said I have no husband. For you've had five husbands, and the one whom you have now is not your husband. You spoke truly. This thing just got so deep, so live, raw, up close and personal. And Jesus, in that short conversation, gives, gives her a summary of her life story and her issues. You can now see why you know, there, were, there were issues about connecting with her. Why is it that you... There, of course there was an ethnic question about being Samaritan. There was a gender question. But there is another level of, of challenges at another deeper level. And it's, you know, one of, of relational uh, challenges. And sometimes... Sometimes we never want to go straight there because, you know, I mean, he's a stranger. You never want to go straight into that kind of conversation because the other person looks all together. Jesus is a Jew. They are the people with the truth. And sometimes you and I will get into conversations and, and here, here's, here's how it goes. Sometimes you'll be talking and maybe not even to a stranger, to a friend. And you find that, you know, the conversation won't pro progress because they, 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 there's something about this conversation that, that focuses on your issues without anyone saying it. You know, those times when you have a conversation and things have been very difficult and you meet your friend and you say, hey, hi, how are you doing? Uh, and, and they said, I, I am well, blessed, highly favored of the Lord. Hallelujah. At that point, 
one sad person says that there is very little you can now add on top of that to say and by the way it hasn't been going well for me and my husband after all they are blessed and highly favored well, with which mouth can I find let me talk like Chinua Chamber with which mouth can I find to say that I have issues blessed and highly favored of the Lord and sometimes you get into a conversation and you know someone you know as we talk you know the Lord has been blessing me your business you haven't had a sale in the last six months and you know someone is talking about how God has been good to me and you know it kept me going and it's true it's not it's not false it's just sometimes some of these things then begin to focus us back on 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 our deficiency and the conversation becomes difficult but what i like about this this conversation is how you know the woman persists and jesus persists and they begin to find a common ground of being present with one another verse 19 after jesus tells her a little bit about her life says i i perceive you're a prophet our fathers worshipped on this mountain again she's now beginning to, to find common ground our fathers worshipped on this mountain and you jews say that in jerusalem is a place where one ought to worship jesus said and this is you know he's beginning now to bring uh, bring commonality here woman believe me the hour is coming when you will neither uh, when you will neither on this mountain nor in jerusalem worship the father this is not about being a jew or being a samaritan you will worship what you worship what you do not know we we know what we worship for salvation is of the jews but the hour is coming and now is when true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and truth for the father is seeking such to worship him god is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth the woman said to him i know that messiah is coming who is called christ when he comes he will tell us all things jesus said to her i who speak to you am he it is at this point that the disciples came and they marveled that he talked with a woman yet yet no one said what do you seek or why are you talking with her this is very interesting the disciples already could see the disciples already made up in their minds that you know jews and samaritans don't talk but Jesus is over here and he's already broken the barriers. Jesus did not see that barrier. In fact, Jesus saw that as an opportunity to bring someone in and be present. Verse 28. The woman then left her water pot and went away into the city and said to the men, it is interesting that you know that, that distinction is made. Say to the men, come see a man who told me all the things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ this lady came to the well at noon Sarsita, when the sun is one of the reasons why she may have come here at this time could be that she didn't want to come early in the morning when it's a little cooler so that she can be with the other ladies people talk everybody else's life is all together mine isn't together at least not relationally let me just escape the drama and i come at at noon she didn't come in the evening because she could have come in the evening when the sun is down she came at noon when no one in their right mind will be coming to get heavy water to take back to the city and he's over there that she met with Jesus this woman having met with Jesus and Jesus was present with her Jesus did not resolve all the issues we don't see that in this passage he doesn't say to us that by the way after she met with Jesus everything became you know um, you know that point in a movie where it ends and then there's that sound ah, and then you know happily you know she met with Jesus and had an encounter with him and in that encounter her life was displayed live raw and edited and that encounter with Jesus in that rawness was a point of transformation for her and this woman then took that story of transformation that story of conversion and took back home 
to share it. And, and this is how she said, shared it. She said, come and see someone who pretty much looked through me. Could this be the Christ? And this is what I learned from this, from this passage. The followers of Christ, like this lady, having encountered with Jesus, are known or should be known for sharing the transformation stories with others beyond their comfort zone. It is instructive for me that this lady went to share with the men. Now, you need to understand with someone with such issues has been with five men and there's a sixth one in the picture. It is not comfortable to go back and talk to the men. Well, we normally say people talk. Even if men don't talk that much, you wouldn't go back to the men to talk. Knowing that this has been the challenge or relational challenge. Now we don't know why, why there were five other, other men. We don't know. Maybe it was something with, to do with her and, and maybe how she relates with guys. Maybe, maybe it was something else. Maybe it was something deeper. Maybe it was something within her that maybe she couldn't have family and so I guess guys figured, you know, why we are one maybe it was something to do with her extended family and say oh no 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 you can't relate with someone like that or maybe it was something to do with her past you never know there was, there was some challenge there Jesus came in spoke with her there was a live encounter and that live encounter transformed her and she went back and shared outside of her comfort zone and she shares to us she shows us in her own life what it means to be a follower of, of Christ. And so at the end of it in verse 30, you know, after she went and she had come and see, could this be the Christ? Verse 30 says, uh, the men of the city uh, came to Jesus out again in that, you know, hot sun, um, you know, in the, at, the, at the well of Jacob, at, uh, you know, sometime after sir, Sita, when the sun is, when the sun is out there. At that time, they came to see, and the men, would, they, they, the Samaritan men, would dress in a certain way. You know, they have turbans and they have certain robes. The way they, they dress, so Jesus could see them from from from, uh, from afar. And in verse 35, as Jesus is looking out and he's seeing, you know, the city coming in, he's telling, he's talking to his disciples and saying, uh, "Do you not say there are still four months when it then it comes to the harvest?" Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes, look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. He's using a picture now uh, of harvest to talk about people and, and people wanting to reach out to him. Verse 36, and he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for, for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. That comment about Samaritans was prophetic in the sense that it was about the Samaritans and the people of the world beyond even the Jews coming to Christ. It's also true of us today. Our city, here in Nairobi, our, our counties, our countries, our continent is full of people like the Samaritan woman who have issues. Some of the issues are very easy to identify and sort of, you know, itemize. And so if someone is going through, I don't know, alcohol addiction, uh, some of it can be hidden for some time, but there's a place where it reaches and it becomes, you know, fairly, fairly obvious. You know, when someone is, is, uh, is um, you know, has extended financial challenges, short financial challenges, usually you can, you can fake it up to, up to a point. But when they extended financial challenges, people begin to notice, isn't it? People begin to notice, yeah, you know, we used to go to Yamamama every three days for lunch. Uh, nice once every whenever. <laughs> you know, it begins, it begins to show, you know. It begins to show in, in some ways some of these some of these things you know maybe someone someone you know is abusive you know either physically verbally or you know sexually whatever um, you know they hide it for for a while but at some point you know it begins it begins to get more obvious uh, those those I would say are the Samaritan woman issues but there are other second layer issues the five husband issues that are harder to see 
And I think those are the ones that bring us all together. Maybe it's a, it's a low, self, low self-esteem. No one can see that you struggle with low self-esteem. I think for, for a long time, uh, confession is good for the, for the soul. Uh, for me, I struggled with, with, uh, with, with um, my view of myself. A matter of fact, when Pastor M and Pastor Carol, when we met all of 26 years ago, I wasn't the kind of person who would be standing in front of you to talk. Would have parties and I'd go away. I'd leave early. I'd find an excuse. Because I didn't believe that I had anything to share with people. Um, I you know, have a, had a little stammer and I would think no one would ever want to listen to me. In fact, I, was so, uh, I had such a low self-esteem, I'd be afraid to talk to the ladies in the team. I didn't think I could get, an, uh, I could get uh, into a relationship. And so I was just quiet by myself and only talk to the people who would talk to me, talk to the ladies who would want to talk to me. I would not have any courage to, to go out. Now, anyone identifying with me, uh, you don't have to put up your hand. But people struggle with issues. <laughs> people, people struggle with issues. Every once in a while, it comes back. And sometimes on a, on a Sunday morning like this one, before I come to share God's word, I ask myself, do I have anything to say? Are people going to hear me? I grew up as a plump kid. Sometimes I wonder about my own self-image, my, how I look. And especially, uh, you know, multiplied by the fact I don't have a very good dress sense. <laughs> and so, you know, I struggle. And, and many of us who, who struggle, well, thank you very much for, for the affirmation. But we, we do struggle. Some, some of the hidden things are things that people spoke to us about. Some of the hidden things are, you know, things that are tied to our families. You know, I'm not very proud of what, you know, my family background. I'm not very proud of things that my dad did or my mom did or decisions that they made. I struggled with, with, with the fact that, you know, I didn't do as well in college or I didn't do as well in high school or didn't do as well in primary school as my folks wanted me to do. I struggle with the hidden thing that I don't, I, you know, I can't have children. Oh, it's a struggle for us. I struggle. And when we get into a conversation with, with Pastor Emmanuel, you know, and he starts talking, and he just looks like he's so together, I have nothing to say. But this is what this, this story says. This story says, followers of Jesus, like a Samaritan woman, are known for sharing the transformation story beyond their comfort zone. Why? Because of that live and raw, and edited encounter with Jesus. Now, we're not told that everything was resolved for this lady. In fact, we're never told, after this encounter, this woman's claim to fame is that she went out and shared. We're not told that, you know, I don't know how you resolve an issue with five husbands. I, you know, they, I don't have a, like a thing in my mind how that is resolved with a happily ever after. We don't have that. And I don't think that for this story that's very important. What is very important is that there was an encounter, a live, raw, unedited encounter with Jesus. And that aligns with what Jesus calls us to do, and that is to go make disciples of the nations. But Matthew 28, 28, 18 to 20 says, go to the nations and make disciples. One of the things we can do, and that's a wonderful thing, is go share with people and tell them, receive Jesus into your life. And that's a good thing to do. But one of the other things is to do what this lady did, what, Nath- what Philip did for Nathaniel, and say, come and see someone who just can look right through my life, live, raw, and unedited. My issues haven't been resolved. They're not finished. The person speaking in front of you, every once in a while, has a few struggles. And my suspicion is that you do too. You just cast a side glance at your neighbor. Maybe they do too. And the truth of the matter is, so do so many others. But at least for us, we are here and we can be present connecting with Jesus. There are so many others who would need to come out of the Samaritan city of Sychar to come and see, could this be the Christ? How do, I, how do we apply this? I think, I think one of the things we could do to apply this 
is like the Samaritan lady to commit ourselves to say, look, I, I, I don't have what, you know, what it takes. I'm, I'm not Jesus. And my life may not be together. Maybe there are you know, relational issues. There are life issues. There are painful issues. Maybe you struggle with your self, self-identity or self-esteem. Maybe you even have questions about this God himself. But one of the things that you and I could do to apply this this week is to say, it isn't all worked out for me, but I'm going to go to someone outside of my comfort zone and say, come and see. Invite them into such a similar experience where you share your own transformation story outside of your comfort zone. Not because your issues are resolved, but because you've had an encounter with Jesus. And you want to invite someone else to have that same encounter. Jesus is going to do his thing with those other people. It's not your job to convert them. In fact, you can't. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. But your job and mine is to tell someone, come and and see. Who do you commit this week? And from now going forward, commit yourself to saying, I'm going to find someone. And maybe that place of discomfort, maybe your family. Sometimes it's hard to talk with your family members about your faith. Eh? It's difficult to, to, to tell them about, you know, well, about, uh, yeah, and you know, I'm blessed, and I've been meeting with Jesus. Difficult to do that. But, but this woman gives me an out, and I like, I like her out. Her out is, come and see. My stuff may not be all resolved, but come and come and see. Come and see this Jesus who's speaking to my life. Come and see this Jesus who, who's helping me cope with what, what life is throwing at me. So this week, commit yourself to sharing with one person. And going forward, you could give yourself, I don't know, a target or something and say, every month I'm going to go out to my equivalent of the Samaritan city and invite invite someone. We as Mavuno ha- have made that commitment and we'll step out of our comfort zone. We don't have it all sorted as Mavuno. We don't have it all sorted. But we are committed to share our story. That's why we'll go out into every city that we can find. Every city on this continent and say, come and see. Come and see. That's why, you know, we started Mavuno downtown. That's why, you know, we started Mavuno Kampala. That's why Mavuno Kampala started uh, Mavuno Kabalagala. That's why Mavuno downtown started Lifeway. That's why Lifeway uh, is starting the church in, uh, in, in Fika. So that we can create centers that say, come and, and see. But we can be a part of that, come and see. Some of us can give towards that as life groups. We can commit ourselves to a city and say, we are going to go and be a part of what's going on in Kampala. We're going to go and be a part of what God is doing with Pastor BX in Ethiopia. And say, you know, if it means sharing my story, I share my story of, of, of what Jesus has done for me, of the way in which Jesus has, has, has spoken into my life. For some of us, we travel a lot. Maybe we can go to these cities and actually share our own stories. Or even share our frequent flyer miles. You know, with people in our life groups, or even with people within the church. You can talk to Pastor Emmanuel, talk to me, you can talk to Pastor Kev. And you can figure out how to share frequent flyer miles. So that people can, more people can have that encounter with Jesus. For some of us stepping out of that comfort zone, we'll be getting a passport. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you haven't traveled and the occasion didn't bring itself. But maybe you're living in Saika now. It's time to go, you know, out to your comfort zone and get out there. And maybe what you need to do is actually get a passport. You know those forms that you feel on your citizen, Nini? Just go fill them. Or maybe your passport has expired. I don't know. Go, go. Renew it. 
but just set yourself up in such a way that you can be part of telling the story of Jesus. So this week, bring someone. Or at least invite them. Tell them, come and see. And from now on, begin to be a part of what Mavuno Downtown is doing. God has called us to plant culture-defining churches in every capital city in Africa and the ghetto cities of the world by 2035. That's part of our come and see experience as, as a community. I want us to pray. What I love about this, this lady, she invited the people to come and see Jesus. They didn't, she didn't invite them to come and see her. It's very instructive that she didn't invite them to come and see someone who resolved all my issues. God will resolve your issues in one way or the other. Sometimes it takes long. Sometimes God resolves you instead of the issues. But what is very important is that encounter. That real life, raw, unedited encounter. The song was sung a little bit earlier because I like it because it just gives us the focus that there should be. And that is that Jesus is at the center. Jesus is not at the periphery. It's not me at the center. It's Jesus at the center. He's the one who gives everything 